Hello there and welcome to Nightline. I'm Anita, I'm Anita Wu. The top stories. Government to regulate gig economy to safeguard workers' welfare. And Justin Trudeau wins narrow victory to form minority government. Our headlining story, the government will regulate the gig economy in the country. According to the Prime Minister, the move is to ensure the welfare of workers in the sector is protected. Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad noted that currently those employed under the gig economy do not enjoy the benefits and protections enjoyed by other permanent workers and they also could be mistreated and abused by employers. The Prime Minister on Tuesday told the Dewan Rakyat that for this, the government will set up a special committee to regulate the gig economy, comprising the Youth and Sports Ministry, the Human Resources Ministry, as well as the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry. Kementerian Sumber Manusia akan menjalankan kajian terperinci dari segi takrifan perundangan berhubung terma-terma dan syarat-syarat pekerjaan dalam industri kategori jig ekonomi selaras dengan perubahan tren ekonomi di bawah perkembangan industri 4.0. Tun Dr. Mahathe added that the gig economy could be a new source for economic growth as well as providing opportunities for the people to increase their income and uplift their standards of living. He added that the gig economy also gives the people in the country, especially those who are unemployed, the opportunity to earn an honest living. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathe said members of parliament who have been absent from the Dewan Rakyat have been issued a warning due to lack of quorum last week. The Prime Minister said the issue of quorum is sometimes raised for political reasons. We have been talking about this issue in the cabinet. We have seen that sometimes the minister is in the country because now there are so many international meetings that we need to be present in international meetings. Dan bagi ahli biasa, mereka juga kadang-kadang ada masalah lain. Kadang-kadang mereka tidak ada dalam Dewan, tapi ada dalam bangunan ini. Jadi mereka boleh dipanggil dengan goncang uh, loceng. Jadi kita bagi warning kepada mereka supaya menentukan mereka hadir. Dewan Rakyat proceedings were halted last Thursday due to a lack of quorum. A minimum of 26 MPs are required in the Dewan Rakyat for proceedings to continue. In another development, the Prime Minister on Tuesday has assured that civil servants who are currently in service and have confirmed their status in the pension scheme will continue to receive the benefits of the scheme. Tun Dr. Mahathe said retirement benefits enjoyed by civil servants were protected as set out under the federal constitution. Apabila seseorang itu bekerja dengan kerajaan, dia uh, mengadakan perjanjian dari pihak, pihak kerajaan dan juga dari pihak, uh, pihak pihak yang bekerja kita tidak boleh abaikan perjanjian kita bagi mereka yang telah bekerja dengan kerajaan mengikut dasar yang lama kita akan kekalkan mereka dengan dasar yang lama the Prime Minister was responding to a question in the Dewan Rakyat on the current status of the proposal to implement the Improved Contract Appointment Scheme to replace the Permanent and Pensionable Appointment Scheme in the Public Service. He added that although the government is facing challenges in financing retirement benefits due to the increasing number of retirees, Tun Dr. Mahathe said the government was taking steps to look into new mechanisms to ensure that the government's burden could be reduced and that civil servants would not lose out after retirement. The offers to acquire Plus Malaysia Berhad by four private companies do not reflect the future prospect of its highway assets. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir said this as the government has yet to receive an interesting bid to buy out the highway operator.
Ya, biasanya kerjaan tak suka terlibat dengan perniagaan. Adalah lebih baik kalau pihak swasta terlibat dengan perniagaan. Kita harap mereka untung dan kita dapat 24% daripada keuntungan mereka. Dengan tidak ada, ada risiko apa-apa, tidak ada pelaburan apa-apa. Tapi kadang-kadang cadangan daripada swasta itu tidak menarik. Speaking to the media at the parliament lobby, Tun Dr. Mahathir said there is still a possibility that Plus Malaysia will be sold to a private company. However, he said a study needs to be carried out to determine the best option for the highway concessionaire. Earlier, Works Minister Barubian had said that offers will be reviewed and presented to the cabinet where a decision will be achieved within several weeks. A final decision on the ailing national carrier Malaysia Airlines Barahad, MAS, is expected by early next year. According to Economic Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Mohamad Azmin Ali, Kazana National Barahad, Kazana and Malaysia Aviation Group Barahad, MAGB, will be scrutinizing four offers in the next couple of months to decide on who will be MAS's strategic investor to strengthen the airline's position in the long term. Penekanan diberi kepada cadangan yang mengambil kira kehematan keuangan dan sinergi kepada operasi Malaysia Airlines. Walau bagaimanapun, di bawah non-disclosure agreement, kerajaan tidak dapat memberikan dan mendedahkan maklumat yang lebih terperinci mengenai pelabur-pelabur strategik yang sedang dalam proses ini. Datuk Sri Muhammad Azman was, was responding to questions from Kapit MP Datuk Alexander Nanta Lingi on when the government expects to see an end to the prolonged issue of MAS and if it was true that Japan was considering taking over the national airline. To another question, Azman said the government took note the importance and contributions of the airline and its staff to the country, pointing out that MAS is now a global name. He said with that in mind, the government through Kazana would continue to hold an important share and influence in MES's new structure, but said the matter has yet to be concluded. Speaking on another matter, Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin on Tuesday said that the Pakatan Harapan should respect the five-year mandate given by the people by allowing Tun Dr. Mahathe Mohamad to complete his five-year term as Prime Minister. The Economic Affairs Minister said those calling for change of the country's top leadership are the ones who are desperate to form a backdoor government. Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin, who is also PKR Deputy President, was asked to comment on reports, naming him as one of the leaders trying to form a backdoor government that would see DAP and Amanah being left out to stop his party president, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, from taking over as Prime Minister. Mana ada berlaku kita buat pilihan raya untuk memilih kerajaan untuk tempoh dua tahun ataupun satu tahun. Jadi saya berharap mereka-mereka yang terlalu gairah untuk berkuasa menghormati mandat yang diberikan oleh rakyat dalam pilihan raya umum yang lepas di mana pilihan raya itu menentukan sesebuah kerajaan dibentuk untuk lima tahun. He added that any mention of a change of leadership would only create more problems including a loss of confidence among investors which would affect the economy. Biarlah yang amat berhormat Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad kekal sebagai Perdana Menteri Sehingga selesai tempoh penggal ini kerana itu mandat yang diberikan oleh rakyat. He hoped that the transition plan issue is not raised and that everyone should focus on the economy and helping the people. Saya cabar mana-mana individu untuk menyatakan kepada umum bahawa ada persetujuan dalam satu tempoh yang terdekat. Tidak ada. Jadi mengapa perkara ini digembar-gemburkan? Saya minta... Dr. Dr. Nasharuddin Mat Isa was on Tuesday charged at the Shah Alam Sessions Court with three counts of money laundering and 30 counts of criminal breach of trust, CBT, amounting to about 4 million ringgit. The former P past deputy president claimed trial to all 33 charges read to him before Judge Rosila Saleh. Dr. Nasharuddin was accused of three counts of money laundering involving over 300,000 ringgit and faces a prison term of up to 15 years or a fine of not more than five times the amount of money gained from the illegal activity or five million ringgit, whichever is higher upon conviction. 
As for the 30 counts of CBT, he faces a prison term of no less than two years and no more than 20 years, and with whipping and liable to a fine upon conviction. He allegedly committed the offences between 2015 and 2018. Judge Rosila allowed a bail of 330,000 ringgit for all charges and also ordered Datuk Nasharuddin's international passport to be surrendered to the court. The judge also fixed November 28th for re-mention of the case. In Pera, the Ipo Sessions Court has ruled that the first day hearing of a rape case involving Pera Exco member Paul Yong Chu Kyung would be conducted on camera. The 23-year-old Indonesian maid, who is the key witness, will be the first to testify on November 11th. Judge Norashima Khaled made the ruling with the consent of both parties during the case management on Tuesday. Earlier, Deputy Public Prosecutor Azham Mokhtar requested that the first day trial of the case to be conducted through video link, but this was objected by Yong's lawyers on grounds that the case did not involve an underage victim. However, both parties later agreed for the first day hearing to be held in camera, with the key witness to be called to testify in the presence of only the judge, the accused, court interpreter, the prosecution and the victim's lawyer. Previously, Yong pleaded not guilty on August 23rd when he was slapped with the charge of raping the maid. The incident allegedly occurred at a house in Meru on July 7th. Coming up on the news, unemployed man charged with raping and murdering senior citizen. The details right after this breather. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Still on Nightline. Dajat Sri Mohammad Najib Dun Raza was involved in every step of the way in ripping off SRC International right from the time it was established. Attorney General AG Tantri Tommy Thomas said this during the SRC International case submission at the Kuala Lumpur High Court on Tuesday. According to Tansri Thomas, the former Prime Minister did not adhere to the best practices in dealing with SRC International when he chaired cabinet meetings. He said a prosecution witness, who was the former government secretary, testified that Dr. Sri Najib did not leave the cabinet room when SRC International was discussed. The AG claimed that Dr. Sri Najib had right from the start of SRC International's establishment ensured that his word was the law in the company. He said this was ensured by Dr. Sri Najib through an amendment of a clause in the SRC International Constitution, which gave him the power to lord over everything. Dr. Sri Najib is facing three counts of criminal breach of trust, one charge of abusing his position, and three counts of money laundering, amounting to 42 million ringgit. The submissions will continue Wednesday. Meanwhile, the government has allocated 5.1 billion ringgit to settle the debt obligations of One Malaysia Development Burhad, 1MDB, and SRC International Sindrian Burhad, SRC, for this year and 2020. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said of the amount, 2.4 billion ringgit has been set aside for 2019 and 2.7 billion ringgit for 2020 for 1MDB's and SRC's debt service repayments. In a statement on Tuesday, Lim said the government remains committed to repaying all loan obligations inherited from the previous administration. Lim said 1MDB's debt and liabilities, inclusive of interests, currently stood at 51 billion ringgit, and these include the 8.93 billion ringgit that has been paid for by the Ministry of Finance and Minister of Finance Incorporated. He added 1MDB has to make two more payments this year, worth 219.2 million ringgit, which must be paid by November 11th, and 143.75 million ringgit by November 29th. Over in Kadah, the body of a second person feared drowned after he fell into a pond in the compound of the Sungai Sikh pump house was found at 1.40 p.m. Tuesday. 28-year-old Muhammad Naim Ahmad was found about 500 metres away from the location where the body of the first victim, Muhammad Faris Iqbal Hafsai Nizam, aged 15, was found at 10.11 a.m. 
District Police Chief DSP Abdul Raza Osman said the bodies of both individuals were found about two kilometres away from the point where they were believed to have fallen at about 10 p.m. Monday night. The body of Muhammad Faris Iqbal was found in the riverbed covered in sand, while Muhammad Naim, an employee of the Irrigation and Drainage Department, was found lodged onto a tree. Authorities also confirmed that no other victims were involved in the incident as previously thought. In Kuala Lumpur, an unemployed man has been charged with sexually assaulting and then killing an 85-year-old woman last month. The accused, K. Satya Raj, is alleged to have raped and committed carnal intercourse against the order of nature on Wong Choi. He is accused of committing these acts at a house in Kampung Tasik Tambahan, Ampang, on September 19th and was charged under Section 376 in brackets 1 of the Penal Code for Rape and Section 377C of the same code for committing carnal intercourse against the order of nature. If found guilty, the 27-year-old can be imprisoned for not less than five years and not more than 20 years and is liable to whipping. He pleaded not guilty to the charges before Sessions Court Judge Nurhazani Hamza. Earlier at a magistrate's court, he was charged with murdering Wong under Section 302 of the Penal Code. If convicted, he will be sentenced to death. No plea was recorded after the charge was read to him before Magistrate Haslinda E. Rauf, as murder comes under the jurisdiction of the High Court. Both courts did not offer bail and set December 18th for case re-mention. In Pahang, an estate worker was sentenced to death by the Tamil High Court after being found guilty of killing his colleague over a tasteless food preparation two years ago. Judge Ratu Hassan Abu Ghani meted the death penalty after ruling that the defence had failed to raise reasonable doubt against the prosecution's case. 37-year-old Mohammad Rosli Nakurgani was charged with killing R. Devadas, aged 60, at an unnumbered house in the Chuanling rubber estate, Muntakap, on April 17, 2017. The accused apparently quarrelled with Devadas because the meal the latter had cooked was not tasty. Over in Selangor, police have uncovered a drug lab at a condominium in Klang and seized heroin worth 119,000 ringgit on Sunday. The authorities also arrested four men, aged between 18 and 44, during the raids. Initial investigations found that the syndicate had been renting the condominium unit for six months, using it as a drug lab. Two of the suspects were also found to have past criminal records. All four were remanded until Sunday to assist investigations for drug trafficking. In Sarawak, the 11th Battalion General Operation Force has seized 6 kilograms of ketamine worth 450,000 ringgit and a four-wheel drive vehicle left behind by a fleeing man at the border with Indonesia near Tabudu during a routine patrol on Monday. It is believed that the drugs were about to be smuggled into the neighboring country. The probe is now underway to determine the nationality of the driver who managed to enter the Indonesian side of the border and escaped and the owner of the vehicle. A passenger, a 33-year-old Indonesian man, was arrested. The suspect and drugs were handed over to Surian police for further action under the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. Coming up right after this break, Japanese emperor formally proclaims enthronement. Stay tuned. We move on to the foreign front. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau looked set to win a second term in the national elections, overcoming recent scandals that had damaged his reputation as a champion of clean governance and diversity. Trudeau's Liberal Party, however, will return to power only as a minority government after failing to secure the majority in the parliament by a slight margin. In his victory speech, Trudeau said that he had heard the frustration of Canadians who did not support his party. And to, those, and to those who did not vote for us, know that we will work every single day for you. We will govern for everyone. And regardless of how you cast your ballot, ours is a team that will fight for all Canadians. 
Based on the latest result, the Liberals had won 158 seats of Canada's 338 electoral districts, significantly fewer than the 184 seats the party had secured in 2015. This means that Trudeau's Liberal Party will have to work with other parties in order to govern. The most likely partner for Trudeau would be the pro-Labour New Democratic Party, which is on track to win 24 seats, giving the two parties a combined 180. While his minority position weakens his mandate, the result will nonetheless come as a relief for the 47-year-old who entered the campaign wounded by a scandal over his handling of a judicial case for a Quebec engineering firm. Japan's Emperor Naruhito has formally proclaimed his ascension to the throne in an elaborate ceremony at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo on Tuesday that culminated in his appearance on the chrysanthemum throne alongside his wife, Empress Masako. The 59-year-old who ascended the throne in May following the abdication of his father, Akihito, marked his official enthronement in front of around 2,000 guests, including heads of state and other royals from more than 180 countries. The ceremony comes as Japan reels from the effects of Typhoon Hagibis, which left almost 80 people dead. A celebration parade was postponed out of respect for the victims and their families. To mark the formal ascension, Japan has pardoned more than half a million people found guilty of petty crimes such as traffic violations. German firm Volocopter has brought its drone-like flying taxi to Singapore this week as it eyes a push into the Asian market. The 18-propeller vehicle flew for about 2 minutes and 30 seconds during a test flight on Tuesday. With that, I'm Anita Wu. Thank you for watching and take care.